I'm all about beauty, business, and being a boss. This is my dream, and now is the time to step into my destiny. I'm Kyla, and this is my corner. Good evening, and welcome to Kyla's Corner. I'm Kyla, and this is my corner. If you're just now tuning in, this is part two of Pillow Talk. If you haven't seen part one, you can find the link to the episode in the description box below. I'm joined by my guest host, Ebony Graves, where we're finishing up our Pillow Talk game and having more Pillow Talk. And here is Girl Talk, Pillow Talk, and All About Friendships, part two. Let's see. Describe yourself in three words. Ooh, um, I am ambitious, mm-hmm. outspoken, mm-hmm. and caring. Yes, I agree with those. Those are, yes, that's perfect. Yes. Okay. okay. Ooh, what do you spend too much money on? Okay. <laughs> I know the answer to this one. <laughs> At least I think I do. Um, I would say I spend the most of majority of my money on food. Um, I buy a lot of food, a little too much. Also, um, you know, we're in college. Like, you know, you got things you want to do outside of the classroom. So I spend money on my ac- activities. Like when I want to go to the movies, when I want to go bowling. Like I just spend my money all the time and my dad and my mom tell me this every day like girl do you see your account you need to stop spending money but it's not really much to do you gotta make your own fun so i'll go out to eat or i'll go to the movies or i'll go bowling but yeah i spend my money on my activities and my food definitely definitely i agree yeah me too i do i'm guilty as charged sorry not sorry everything's so expensive (laughs) now it is and the cap is disgusting (laughs) so we're not gonna talk about that (laughs) <laughs> We're not gonna talk about the calf. The calf is a whole other situation. That's a whole other uh, kind story. Of That's a whole That's story for a different day. Different right now, day. we just gonna talk about food and the activity. <laughs> <laughs> the calf is not the move. It's just know that it's not the move. Don't do it. No. Don't do it. Um, no. Okay. Or is that me? You. Oh, it's me picking now. So Y'all, it's just you know the conversation is so great. You just kind of get thrown off. Right. Where do you see yourself in five years? Ooh, five years. I will be. 25 going on 26. Ooh, so, wow, time flies. I'll be graduated from undergrad and grad school. Mm -hmm. So I'll be in my career. I'll be definitely invested somewhere in the magazine or the media industry, Mm -hmm. entertainment industry, something of that nature. I'll already be on my way or already have started my syndicated talk show. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, a lot of people don't usually do it this young or that young, 26-ish, you know, but I could be the the change of the face of the media of the talk show industry so who knows that's all in the works of god and how hard i work myself so we'll just we'll see yeah i guess i'll answer that too five years it'll be 20 25 26 i want to definitely be in the area that i will plan to live in for the rest of my life because i grew up moving around a lot i don't want to do that so i hopefully will be living in texas if i am not in my dream home at that point, my dream apartment slash town home at that point, working hopefully in the entertainment and sports um, field. I hopefully will have my agency started by then. So I have clients, big clients that I'm representing in the sports and entertainment field. I will continue to produce videos on my YouTube channel. So hopefully my channel will be much larger. I have a larger following at that point. Next. What's your favorite color and why? Well, okay, so my favorite color is green. I don't know if you guys can tell from my jewelry. Um, Emerald green is my favorite color. It kind of went back and forth when I was younger. It used to be red, then it was pink, and then it was green again. Um, But green represents positivity, optimism, growth um, to me. So I look to green as those, um, those daily inspirations so I can continue to strive towards my goals. Wow. Mm -hmm. Just real short, purple is the color of royalty, peace, you know, so I just Mm -hmm. love purple. Everything I have is purple. Mm -hmm. Love the color purple. Down to like the last. Ooh, what do you miss about being a little kid? I miss how simple things were. You know, back when you were a kid, you didn't think about, you know, I got homework, student loans. (laughs) I got 
I'm about to graduate. Like, where am I going? You know, I'm failing these classes. These tests are hard, and I got to study all night. Like, everything was so simple. We just woke up, and your mom told you, put that on, and you went to class. You had recess. You had reading time. You had nap time, snack time, another nap time, and then it was time to go home. Your whole day was, you know, very easy, very done for you. I wish someone had told me as a child, like, go sit down. You don't want to be a child or an adult. You don't want to be an adult. You want to be a child. You want to just grow and just enjoy the experiences that you have. Because when you think back on them, you only have but so many. And your memories fade as you get older. Mm -hmm. So you don't really remember everything. So I wish that it was back to the simpler time. Yeah, especially because I hated nap time. I'm like, I don't want to go to sleep. No, I want to be up. I want to play with my friends. Like, I feel like it should be some type of refund, like, cross over into adulthood like all the times I didn't take advantage of nap time then now I can take advantage of them like oh yeah Kyla don't go to class have nap time you have you earned nap time from back when you were six and you didn't take advantage of it then you can have it now like, I that's, like that that's what I need like we have so. nap time coupons yeah nice. I think I would have like a, a nice book a nice coupon book of yeah. nap times yeah. that I didn't use yeah and snack times because groceries get expensive they in college. Do. Honestly, all those snacks yeah. that I didn't eat, because I didn't eat everything. I, I was very mm -hmm. picky as a child. Oh, yeah. So I would definitely love to get my snacks back. Oh, my gosh. That was a good question. You never think about that when you're older. What's something you like about me? Oh, Ebony is very positive. You're very positive. Like, you're always that, like, light. Like, you don't really ever see you down. Or like sad, like, oh my God, Kyla, you look beautiful today. Oh, so and so, like you're doing amazing. Oh, I'm proud of you doing this. <laughs> like just always like that shining light to other people. So Aww. yeah. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> okay, what I like nice. Get it together. What I like most about Kyla is that we we met so many different times, and every time we've met, it's been like a different kind of way, and it's been. A different kind of connection and it's brought us together so many different ways and I look to Kyla as that inspiration like she's been through so many things we both been through so many things but we're able to connect and be that supportive outlook like I know when I'm with Kyla I'm gonna have a good time we're gonna eat we're gonna talk we're gonna have a good time just enjoying our time with each other and it never feels like I have to rush like some people you talk to them and you feel like they're Bothered draining. with you and they're yeah they're draining the energy out of you but she doesn't drain the energy out of me like I could talk to Kyla all wow. day and be like man I don't even feel like going to my room and taking a nap like <laughs> I could talk to you all day and I go to class and she just makes time go by so um, so much better for me like when we were together in the pageant like going when Kyla was at practice I knew we were gonna have a good time because <laughs> Kyla would make it fun we were making jokes even though she we all had our own struggles like we never she never allows them to hold her back she's always been very positive and very just supportive of others so I really love that about Kyla. Well, thank yeah. you. Yes. Okay is it, it is my turn right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah we're down to the last one. Oh if you could live in any TV show what would it be and why? If I could live in any TV show, mm -hmm. oh my God, so many are just rushing through my mind right now. Cause I'm an old soul, y'all. So I like, you know, Moesha, Living Ooh. Single. Mm. Um, man. Ooh, Living Single, yes. I have my own magazine I company like? if I was there, right? Right, wow. yeah, I'm trying to think. Like, mm. what would I want to be in? You know what, I think I would want to be in Moesha. Um, I love Brandy, like she's, one of my idols, like she's always been very inspiring to me since a young child and watching her on Moesha go through like so many different situations as a 16 year old, 14 to 16 year old, all the way up to like 18, 20, mm -hmm. you know, watching, I, I would watch the TV and be yelling at her like Moesha, now you knew, <laughs> you did not have to go hang out with Q last night when you Q know always getting you. you in trouble. Right, and I used to hate it. And so I would love to be her best friend. I would love to be her niece or um, Kim and just be down there with them. And I would have been probably the mama on the show. Like, girl, you know you don't need to do that. There was a Different World remake. I think I would probably be Dwayne and Whitley's daughter. Oh, yes. I, if y'all ever are looking to do a remake. Kyla Bryant. I got you. The oh, last the one, y'all. last question. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about yourself? Okay, this is kind of like, I, I call it like a double-edged sword because I love it, but I hate it about myself. 
I love that I'm always the mama in the group. Mm -hmm. You know, I love that everybody kind of knows me as like Mama Ebb on campus. I'm really known as Mama Ebb on campus. But I also don't like that part of me because, you know, sometimes I want to be the fun one. I want to be the, you know, outgoing and, you know, extra crazy one sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I hate that I'm always the mama in every friend group that I go to. Yeah, well, thank you yes, for coming on the show. This of was course. great. It was, was fun. fun. Mm -hmm. Little girl chat, girl mm -hmm. talk, pillow talk, whatever you want to call it. Yes. But it was great. I look forward to you know coming on Ebony Expressions yes, one be day. Looking out for that video just, soon, I'll definitely link that um, once it's completed. Yes, it'll be up. Yes, yes, I'll link Ebony's YouTube channel so you can follow her. You know she has some bomb videos about you know makeup, hair, you know hair reviews, and you know university life. So just it's a great channel, great watch. You won't Thank regret you. it. So. You, yes. And don't forget to subscribe to Kyla's Corner now. Don't forget our channel. Come has on, some great episodes. Go watch, catch up. All right, All don't right. be watch this. Come if on, this is your first Look. one. Go watch the rest. We, you got six more episodes to watch before this one. Okay. You got to catch Come up. On, you got to catch up. Get a snack. Okay. Fill a bowl like this up with some popcorn. Popcorn. Get you a drink. Episodes are only, what, 15 to 20-ish minutes? Right. If that's, you can watch Netflix, you nothing. can watch Kyla's Corner. Come on. Right. And when we come back, we will be talking about the importance of friendship. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Kyla's Corner. And now we will be talking about the importance of friendship. Um, I like the fact that you pointed out you don't you're not quick to call everybody a friend. Like, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, you're an associate. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're a colleague. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have class together. Mm -hmm. You're a classmate. Like, I definitely feel that way, especially about the word best friend. Like, oh, we threw yes. that extra word in front of it. Yeah. Like, you have to really, ooh, if I call you my best friend, I, mm -mm. it's not that I expect a lot out of you, but at mm -hmm. that point, I feel like we have a close connection. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you don't do certain things as a best friend that you, should be doing or that mm -hmm. you expect me to do it kind of makes me take in aback and it makes me question you know that friendship with you so it takes me a while like mm -hmm. my mom and my aunts and my grandma always taught me like abc friends mm -hmm. you have your a's the acquaintances you have your b's who are your best friends who maybe you like an acquaintance but they're a little closer and then you have your c's which are your closest oh. friends so. i personally don't have a best friend like i've been through best friends so i'm very very cognizant of calling someone my best friend like mm -hmm. i'm not quick to call her and her and him my best friend because I've been wronged so many times by people mm -hmm. I called my best friends or they've been too quick to turn their back on me and if you're that quick to turn your back on me you show me that you truly weren't my mm -hmm. best friend you weren't my friend so um, just in knowing that but definitely my mom my mom is my best friend Same. my mom and my cousin you, I call her sister cousin uh, we're best friends because mm -hmm. just like I know I can call you for anything at any time of the day of the night and we can talk about everything like they those two they know everything about me yep. and another thing is about about friends not necessarily best friends but friendship doesn't always have a timeline on it yeah like people live a whole life someone right like someone I might have known someone for six months and we're closer than someone I've known for six years right so I mean you know like my friend who I've had the longest Lauren like she knows a fair almost all of my life about mm -hmm. me you know but she's the same way like she doesn't she's not quick to call anybody her best friend and I've known her for since we went to high school together, but before we met before high school, back in our mindless behavior fangirl <laughs> days. Mindless behavior was my life. Oh, uh, that oh my was God. everything. The phone number that they put in their song, I literally called uh, and I thought what, that they were going to 323. 323, I don't know. Something. Play when, when did we six say this? 660. Oh, oh. that, like, that was the phone. I would call them and I would wait for Princeton to I answer. I tried to call and I was hurt. For I real. really started crying because I thought they were going to answer. My mom was like, girl, what are you doing? They're not going to answer you. Oh, but yeah. anyways, so, it just made me upset a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> but like um, a lot of girls, I just, I never gravitated toward girls. And mm -hmm. my mom can definitely attest to this because when I tell her I get a new girlfriend, she's like, what? You don't? Not that I don't like girls, but girls have always been very catty to me. Like yeah. I just, in my elementary, middle, high school days, like girls hated me. They literally could not stand me, despised me for whatever reason. Jealousy, you thought I was prettier than you, whatever the case may have been. I have no idea what it was, but just girls just, and they're so hurtful. Like, yeah. I got into an um, argument with someone who I used to call my best friend and she used the the thing that you never, ever, ever bring up ever again mm -hmm. to throw it in my face. Mm -hmm. And that just showed me the type of person that she was. Yeah. And thereafter she tweeted before she blocked me on Twitter she tweeted I never lost a friend that I wanted back and I was like 
that's just crazy. Uh, uh, what kind of friend does that? You know, if you're really friends with someone, even if you're not friends with them anymore, like I would never disrespect someone and like throw something in their face that they trusted me with. Because at the end of the day, we were close at some point, you know, and Definitely. we have that. Re you should still have that respect for someone. And I think a lot of girls, when we get into these catty situations and they want to hurt you and they want to hurt you where they know it's going to hurt and they hit below the belt, it shows you their character. Like you said, mm -hmm. it shows you, OK, this is not who you portrayed yourself to be the entire time we were friends. Mm -hmm. And I know I will never speak to you again. We had a small little clique of black girls at my high school in Minnesota and they, when I, they found out, I was supposed to move into Illinois, say, my sophomore year. They, when they found out this, they literally told my closest friend, my best friend, um, we don't like Ebony anymore, so we're about to, you know, take her spot. She's not about to be the leader of this group anymore. Like, this is Love & Hip Hop, Real Housewives of Atlanta. Like, oh, they really thought no. we were on television. <laughs> and it became a whole situation of, you know, putting my business out there, coming for me. The day before, my last day of school, they literally caused an argument with me and was trying to fight me, you know? And it's it's like, why? What is the gain, the hope in the game that you hope to gain from this? You know what I'm saying? But people love to just start issues. And when you have representatives on television, such as, you know, Jocelyn Hernandez or Mimi. Black China, Mimi, Nini, um, Portia, it's just all these people on television. I love them. Now, don't get me wrong, I love Real Housewives of Atlanta and mm -hmm. love hip hop. But when young women see these things on television, they think, oh, this is how we're supposed to act. Oh, this is how friends are supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're supposed to do this. Like, no, you have to be the change that you want to see in the world. You don't want to be a caddy person that shows you how they are. I have one best friend, Maya. Shout out to you, girl. She is younger than me. She's one year younger than me, but she's. Um, she knows how to read me like nobody else. Like she could look at me and tell like, okay, what's wrong? Who did what to you mm -hmm. and who do I need to fight? Because there's no reason for you to be upset. Like she could literally just look at me and tell what's wrong. When I'm telling her stories about what I go through here, she's like, I know why you're upset about this. I'll just end this with um, all of that being said out of one little tweet. <laughs> I've learned that really, truly, honestly, if it's meant to be, it will come back. Like, mm -hmm. I definitely have had friends. I'm like, dang, I kind of miss her. What is she doing now? Like, where is she at? Like, dang. But, like, I just, you know, it's just, it's gone. But, you know, if it's truly meant to be, like, we'll have that conversation or that encounter with each other. Mm -hmm. And literally things will fall back into place like we never left each other. So we'll just see. But shout out to all of my, you know, my friends, you know, everybody, you yes. know, just. You know, Hearts. love y'all. Love y'all. Mm -hmm. So um, when we come back, we will have Kyla's closing thoughts. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Kyla's Corner. And here are Kyla's closing thoughts. I guess my final point is, like I said in the last segment, build that foundation first. Get to know as much as you can about somebody, um, especially when it comes to friendships and best friends, whether it's male or female. Get to know them. Ask questions. Ask what you would want somebody to ask you. Have thoughtful conversations and just really try to grow your relationship so that your foundation is strong. So if you do go through something with someone, you're able to say, you know what, we're bigger than this. This is such a small issue compared to our whole friendship. Hey guys, as you all know, I am on spring break, so I'm not recording this week, hence the two part episode. I hope you all enjoyed part one and part two. And I am just here checking in with you all from Kyla's room actually but I am here to present to you your Kyla's Corner scripture and quote of the day so your quote is one of the most beautiful qualities of true friendship is to understand and be understood from Lucas Seneca and our Kyla's Corner scripture is from Proverbs chapter 17 verse 17 a friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a time of adversity. Remember to keep those true friends close. Always love them and cherish them. Thank you so much to Ebony Graves for being my guest on the show for part one and part two. Thank you all for watching. You're amazing. Don't forget to email me at kylascorner1 at gmail.com and follow me on Instagram at kylascorner. Thank you once again to Ebony. You were amazing. And until next week, stay tuned to Kyla's Corner. Bye.